morning, First Presbyterian Church. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us, whether that's uh, in person or online. We do ask that if you are a new visitor, first of all, we're so glad that you're here. Welcome. And could you please fill out that little white card on the pew pocket in front of you? Drop that in the offering plate so that we can keep you up to date with everything that's happening uh, at church uh, by the week, by the day, and also lift up any prayer requests that you have as a staff. Uh, we love to do that. Are there any announcements? Any announcements? Uh, yes, Brian. Hey, good morning all. Just a quick update from your pastor search committee. We met just yesterday. I want to share a couple of items with you. We met yesterday to review just a small number of the candidates. Well, the, can the small number of candidates that did come in um, and talk about next steps. What we want to mention to you and, and convey to you, uh, just to, in the way of keeping you updated, is that the number of applicants has been really small. It's been a small number of people so far. So we are going to focus our efforts more on getting the word out and recruiting and trying to collect more really quality applicants. Um, so that's going to be our activity going forward, and we've committed to meet together every week, weekly, until uh, we make more progress in that arena. So uh, please do keep us in your prayers. Uh, keep our eventual pastor in your prayers and, and uh, pray for us as we go through this process. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to be doing as much networking as possible, trying to connect with people that we know, uh, even over many thousands of miles. So uh, if you know of anybody, let us, uh, let us know. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Important update from the Pastor Search Committee. And Paul has an announcement as well. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so there's an insert in your bulletin about our life group. But, you know, in life things change. And uh, instead of Friday at our house out in Goldstream, uh, we're changing to Thursday evenings here at church. So if there's anybody who was uh, put off by the idea of driving way out to Goldstream Valley, you can now come here. All right. So nice. A nice central location life group right here at the church Thursday evenings. Uh, check, talk to Paul and Terry. Also, um, the new gardening class. Uh, is it too late to join? Uh, Terry? No, uh, it starts tomorrow from 6 to 8, there's 8 sessions, and there's a lot of people who Okay, so this is the new gardening, new chapter, new session of the gardening class starts tomorrow, uh, 6 to 8, Monday evenings. Perfect opportunity to do a little bridge building, uh, some outreach to, to welcome people into the church to offer uh, uh, a viable, helpful thing uh, and show people that we're not too weird. Um, we're pretty cool and we love Jesus and we want them to too. All right, so any other announcements? Anything else? All right, please stand for the call to worship. Alleluia. Come and praise, you servants of God. Praise the name of Yahweh. From east to west, from north to south. May God's name be blessed From east to west, from north to south, praise the name of Yahweh. May God's name Who can compare to our God, seated high above the nations of the earth? God's glory fills the skies. May God's name be blessed both now and forever. Please join us in singing, Oh How I Need You. Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you and to know so little else I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how Oh 
Let us pray together and confess our common sin. God our Father, we come in humility, confessing who and what we are. We are often unresponsive, or we are afraid. Holy Spirit speaks, for we fear what you might call us to do. And your Holy Spirit touches our lips, close our mouths, and bears to speak for her. And the wind of the Holy Spirit blows, close the windows of our hearts, afraid that the breeze will destruct her around us. When the fire of the Holy Spirit touches us, Let us take a time of silence to confess our personal sins. Good news. God has done great things for us. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are claimed by God's grace. The Holy One has begun a good work in us. Even now, the love of God is expanding our knowledge, sharpening our discernment, and equipping us for excellence. Go and bear fruit.
May the peace of Christ be with you. As we think about all of God's good gifts, let's be grateful and uh, continue to worship God with our tithes and offerings.
Lord God, we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And by your Spirit, God, we might be able to praise you not only with hearts and voices, but with our whole lives. And so, God, we offer up these tithes, these offerings, as signs that we are willing. We are asking you to to stir up your Spirit in us, that we can continue to offer up our lives, not only on Sunday morning, but all week long, with what we say, with what we do, with how we spend our time and money, with how we love others in your name. This is our prayer, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's a time for joys and concerns. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to thank God for Lily and Kyle. Aren't they doing a great job? It, oh, what a blessing, uh, you know, just for them to be able to stand up and lead us in worship. And uh, uh, Lily has such a wonderful voice. <laughs> it's such a, oh, that's such a blessing. So I definitely want to pray for that joy for, again, allowing us as a community to allow for young people to come up and lead and be a part of the fellowship and the worship here. But the other prayer that I have for is George. Uh, George, our brother in Christ, is struggling. Uh, He uh, got mugged here not too long ago. He is uh, coming back up here, and uh, he's just having a very difficult time. So we need to lift up George, and we need to thank God for all the young people here that are a part of this church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful music that stirs our hearts, uh, in, the, in that music, your word is alive. It touches us. It touches our soul. It provides us with just immediate understanding of your presence in our life. So we thank you for that. We thank you for Lily and Kyle, who is up here leading us in worship, Father. What a blessing. And we pray for others who might consider that same thing, that we would uh, nurture them and allow them to be a part of the worship service. And we pray for George, who is struggling. Uh, Father, we pray for, again, that he'll turn to you and he'll continue to follow you. And, Father, that things will come together for George so he can come back here in Fairbanks. And we pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. Any other joys or concerns that we can lift up before God? Yes, I'll I'll go around there. (laughs) took the long way around. <laughs> hey, um, I just wanted to ask for prayer for um, Ben's younger brother and his wife. She, she is being induced today with their first baby. So hopefully we'll have another whole baby born today. And Ben's parents have been here for a week and a half, and we've had a wonderful visit, and they're going to be flying home tonight. So prayers for safe travels for them. What's ben, uh, Ben's brothers, Sam and, and Melissa? Let's, Father, again, we thank you for the beautiful gift of birth, of um, bringing life into this world. This is your goodness. This is your gift to us. And I pray for both couples as uh, the couple that they that truly will prepare, be prepared. We pray for that little baby to come uh, quickly. We pray for a uh, uh, a safe and healthy process. And then we thank you so much, God, for this miracle. And Father, we pray for Ben's family as they head out. We thank you for their presence, their fellowship, and the way they uh, not only bless uh, Ben's family as well as our family. We pray for safe travels for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else? Any other joys or concerns? Okay, seeing none, let's bow our heads. Father, again, you invited us here this morning. It is by your call for us to be here, to be in your presence, to be able to receive your word in a way that transforms us, not only transforms us, but spurs us, encourages us. It provides us with clear understanding of your truth and which helps us to live our world. Father, we know that we come from so many different places, and sometimes those places are dry. Sometimes those places are broken. But you provide us with your grace here. You remind us of your goodness. And especially this loving community, God, that encourages one another, that it it helps each other and just loves each other. Father, this is your gift to us, and we thank you for that. And Father, also we thank you for the prayer that your son has taught us, a prayer that sometimes when we find ourselves uh, finding hard uh, difficulty with words, you provide us with the words that we need for prayer. And we pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's children's time. I got a little, uh, I got a couple surprises here for you. Come on up. I got a treat. Uh, some may like it and some may not, and I know that you have to be really careful because uh, some people actually have allergies when it comes to peanuts. But I want to show you something with regard to these peanuts. Okay, so you see these peanuts? They're all in a bag. Now, they look like they're all together, aren't they? They look like they're a community of peanuts. Okay, this is the first Presbyterian Church of Peanuts. Okay? Now, think of these peanuts as individuals, people who are in the process of getting to know each other. See that? And they're getting to know each other. And I, I want you to do something. Now, uh, who is allergic to peanuts? You are? Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, what I want you, I want you to go around and I want you to grab one peanut shell, one peanut from every, yeah, everybody gets one peanut. Okay. You got it? Go ahead, grab, go, 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 grab a peanut. Oh. There we go. And you get to keep it. And if, even if you don't make, even if you make a mess, it's okay. It's okay because we're going to have an opportunity to clean it up later. So everyone's got a peanut, so don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Well, here, come on, look, grab a peanut. Come on, guys, grab a peanut. Come on, come on, come on. If you're going to be up here, you got to grab a peanut. Come on, come on. So, look at this peanut. So, we sit there, and this is a person. This is a person like you and me. And the unique thing about this peanut, it has a shell on it, because what you really want to do is you want to get down into the peanuts. Yeah, there's salt on the shell. It's pretty good. But uh, So, what we need to do, so what God does... God puts us together, okay? He puts us together, and we are becoming friends. We're becoming brothers in Christ. But see, there's something wrong here. The shell is keeping us from becoming friends. So God's in the process of taking the shell apart. That means he's helping us to become closer to one another. He helps us to share our hearts. So what happens is God helps break the shell. So break the shell, break the shell. And out comes these peanuts. And so we got this peanut, and we got this peanut, and they broke their shells, and guess what? They are out together, and they don't have their shells on anymore. And look at that. See? They're there. But see, God is in a process of making them very close, very close friends. But look at this. God, but God says, I'm not done with you. He says, this is still not friendship. This is still not close family. You know, this is what family looks like. This is what God wants us to look like. Let me share you something with you. God wants us to look like this. <laughs> Peanut butter. That's what is coining the fellowship. God's in a process of breaking our shells down. He puts it together, but also he makes it where we get so close. Such a great family that you turn into peanut butter. That is his gift to us. I know it sounds kind of weird, but he wants us to be close together. He wants us to be tightly uh, uh, as brothers and sisters like a family. So all these people here are families. Okay, the peanuts are good. Okay, hold back, hold back. <laughs> so hang on to those peanuts. peanuts. Uh, close your hands around them right now. Uh, uh, not now. <laughs> and don't worry about the mess. Uh, we'll get down. I'll, I'll come out here and clean it later on, okay? So, but do this. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to repeat after me and say, Dear God, thank you so much for choosing me to become a member of this church, of your family. Help me to learn to become close to others so we can become peanut butter. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, God bless you. You get to go back to your family, okay? Yep, we got a mess up here. <laughs> there it is, like the steakhouse. Let's please rise as we continue by reading God's Word. Psalms 29, 1 through 11. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The Lord is the Lord of the Lord. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is the Lord. 
voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes <coughs> Lebanon to skip like a calf and stir like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kish. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth, strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that passes through the flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Please be seated. I think some of you are aware that uh, I was out moose hunting and I got back yesterday, and I will be using uh, that experience uh, for today's lesson. Uh, let me get to my sermon on my... Uh, I, I just want you to know it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. And a lot of you here were fervently... Who was fervently praying for me to get a moose? Any hands? Thank you so much. <laughs> but... Uh, what I had instead is I had an experience that truly helped me to understand what it means to live in a loving community. I want to thank Bill so much for inviting me to his cabin. And I want to thank Scott, who's probably at home. I'm going to get on him later on for not being here. I told him he had to be here if I'm going to be here. I'm going to cut some moose with him later on. I thank God for Daniel that was there yesterday and for Bennett. But being in that cabin for one week with these men were an amazing experience. Uh, um, first of all, the scenery, every day you'll get to see a sunset or a sunrise because you're in the stand <laughs> waiting for that moose. And you see wildlife, it was just amazing. Um, like I said, but the fellowship and the friendship that came from that was out of this world. We cooked dinner together. We ate together. We played cribbage. you got to watch out for Bill and cribbage. <laughs> uh, we shared stories. We especially shared our faith in Christ. We got together and were able to share that, encourage one another. Um, I just want you to know that I know very little about moose hunting. I know very little about it. But Bill and Scott brought me along. They mentored me. They showed me what I need to do. I needed that. I need to know what was it like, but just their goodness, just their willingness to take their time just to share all of that with me was amazing to put up with me. You know, uh, the great thing is that I did call a moose in. <laughs> uh, a lovesick moose and uh, came up 65 yards from me and it's looking straight at me and my adrenaline's pumping and I'm trying to sh sh see his chest. And I tell you, you can't hold a rifle when you're drilling. <laughs> It's going like this. And so I missed the moose, but that was all right. Everything else was wonderful. Actually, Daniel and I were calling each other. Uh, he, I went one way, and I was going around the edge. He's coming one way. He heard me doing the moose call, the, the cow call, and he thought I was a real cow, and he started to call me, and I started to call him back. <laughs> Thank God we didn't shoot each other. Uh, but I learned this, all of this, in a community of loving disciples, of brothers 
who got together and allowed me to be a part of their experience. Tomorrow morning, we'll be focusing on that, that Jesus' disciples live in a loving community. This is God's gift to us. This community is God's gift to us. It is family. It is necessary for our growth. God placed it here for us. God has given us each other, and we need to know how important that is. So we'll be focusing on that. So for the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at a series of sermons. The worship is a way of discipleship. And uh, one of the things that we learned from the uh, Go seminar was that there are three very important things that we need to remind ourselves, and we'll be reminding ourselves for the whole year, is go make disciples. Now, the go part can be challenging, but, I, it, it, but it's very simple. All God wants us to do, God wants us is just to engage in relationships. Be that light. Get to know someone. Get to know your coworker. Become a friend. Get to know your neighbor. Take time to establish those relationships. That's what go means. Develop those relationships and allow for God's work in you to transfer to that person. You'll have opportunities to know that person as well as get to hear them and what they're going through. And God will give you the opportunity, just like Philip, to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what make is all about. Make is that we share the good news of Jesus Christ, what Christ did for us, God's love, and that gives that person an opportunity to respond. Now, in the month of October, we're going to be looking at a series of sermons that has to be about, uh, it's wrapped around three circles. Another way of helping us to understand how we can share the good news with those people we make friends with. So we'll be doing that. And then the disciple part, that God truly wants disciples. First of all, he wants, sons, he wants sons and daughters, but we are disciples. We are in this camp, this wonderful camp in which we're coming together and we're learning more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So that is what's the process. And, and, and we learn also that God is seeking true worshipers. True worshipers, people who are fervent in wanting to worship God with all their heart. In spirit and in truth, God gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can worship in spirit and in truth. God is in a process through worship, through living a life of a sacrifice, living sacrifice, that he's transforming our way, our thinking, so that we may know God and we may know God more and more and more. And every day, every Sunday morning, God invites us. Again, this is so important. You're here because of God's invitation. Yeah, you're thinking, yeah, it's, it's my free choice. No, there is a choice. You can respond. But God is calling you every Sunday morning to be a part of this worship service. Because this is a community event. This is a worship service where we come together as disciples of Christ. And in this worship service, worship service, God presents us a very small part of what it means to worship throughout the week. God, every day, every moment of the day is inviting you to be in his presence. There's never a time in your day that God is not inviting you to be in his presence. That invitation is strong, and God wants us to respond to that. So invitation in the morning is acknowledging that God called us here. It is by God's will that we are here, and I respond, we responded to the call. Then we got the call to worship. You know, that response that says, hey, God is telling me that I'm in his presence, but now I'm in the process of acknowledging him. I'm in the process of worshiping him. I'm in the process of connecting with God and giving my worship to God in that most simple way as I live life. Then we hear the songs. Those songs are powerful. We are the only creature, the living creature, that truly appreciate music. It speaks to our soul. Our soul needs songs. We're created to respond to songs. And in those songs, we hear God's word. I tell you, the music this morning was, in, it's always incredible. But I don't know about you, it, it was very touching for me to hear the music. And it does, it stirs your soul. It helps us to understand that we are in God's presence. Then we have the confession. What is so beautiful, because God is convicting us to say, is there anything there that's keeping me from having this right relationship? There's something nagging. There's something that says, you know, I, I'm hanging on to something that I should let go. 
something that's sinful. And God gives us that conviction through the Holy Spirit to respond to that. That's what life is throughout the week. Then we pass the peace of Jesus Christ. We do this so well here. It is one of the most important parts of the worship service is connecting with each other, passing the peace, acknowledging, acknowledging them, letting them know that I really care about you and I want to encourage you, I want to connect with you. That is so important. And that is so important throughout the week. God is prompting us through the Holy Spirit that we need to connect with our brothers and sisters. We need to provoke them, okay? We need to encourage them because we know what discouragement feels. Again, this is a microscope uh, 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 look at what God, how God wants us to live life throughout the week. Prayer. Oh, golly. The gift of being able to talk to God. Having the confidence, as we hear in Hebrews, that we have the confidence to approach the throne of grace because of what Christ did to us. Because of the transformation that took place when we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have the Holy Spirit that allows us to have the confidence to go before God. God wants us to take that confidence every day and go before Him and pray. Reading Scripture, listening to Scripture, God's Word is so impairment when it comes to transforming us And the thing is, not only do we read scriptures, but God brings to our memory scripture that we heard this week, scripture that we read a couple days ago, but scripture does come into our lives in so many ways. The offering is really important because it reminds us that we have to be good stewards of what we have, that everything that we have belongs to God, and God reminds us on a Sunday morning that we are to be good stewards, that we are to invest into his kingdom, and it's his money, it is his gifts that he gives us to be able to make that money. And throughout the week, God has reminded us, how can we use this money to glorify God? We are worshiping God every day of the week, every minute of the week. God's word being explained and proclaimed. This pulpit has always been a scary place for me. And I'm Maybe you don't think that, but you just don't walk up here and preach. There's more just to preaching in this pulpit. It is your life. It is knowing that I'm sharing something and explaining God's Word, and I better be darn right about it, because I don't want to trip anybody up. I don't want to mislead anybody. So receiving God's Word, allowing it God's Word to be explained to you is so important. That is God's gift to us. And he does that throughout the week. And we respond to him with God's word, filled song. We're filled with his goodness and and our thankful hearts. And we have the benediction. So, this morning, we're looking at what it means to worship in a community of believers. So let's go to the text. Hebrews 12. Now, Hebrews is a unique book. It is a book that's been written to Jewish people that know exactly what it means to be a Jewish person. They've lived with the laws. They've lived with all these traditions. Okay, these traditions are very important. It reminded them of who they are, that they're Jewish people, that they've been called by God to be a part of the community, and that this Hebrew, this, this, this book tells us all the significant things that when a Jewish people, when a Jewish person sees that, goes, yes, the high priest, yes, this, yes, this, I know that this is a part of my life. And what God is doing, saying that Jesus Christ fulfilled every part of everything that was demonstrated to you through the Jewish traditions. And he reminds us of that. And here's Hebrews uh, 10, 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that we, he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true hearts in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. God is reminding us that we have confidence that we can go before God that we can stand before his presence, we can go beyond the veil. You remember the veil was a place that basically hid the, uh, the uh, Ark of the Covenant, and only the high priest was able to go behind that veil. He had the right. 
No common folk like you and I can go behind that veil. You had to be very, very special. You had to have gone through a lot of schooling and a lot of training, and you have to be, it had to be pure. But God says, guess what? That curtain is broken. You can go into the holy place because of what my son has done for you. You have this confidence. Don't be afraid. Walk in boldly because you've been given that privilege through Jesus Christ. Then he says in 23, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. We know hope is so powerful for us. We can't live life without hope. Hope is giving us assurances, promises that we can live our future. The hope of Jesus Christ says that there will be a day when we die, when a day when it comes to our death, that there is a place waiting for us. It literally transforms the way that we look at life. People without that hope are aimless. They're struggling with trying to find that purpose. But God says, you can have assurance that there is hope. I fulfill my promises, and you can hang on it because I'm going to help you walk into the future because I give you hope. It's so then he goes and gives us this loving community for disciples. Let us consider how to stir one another. Think of coffee. I think everybody here, most people like coffee. Just stir it up. You've got to stir that cream in. You've got to stir it up. To love and good works. We are called as brothers and sisters is to encourage one another to love and to do good works in God's kingdom. Not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. That stir, there's a better word in the Greek. In fact, it's even a stronger work, word. It's called provoking. Remember how sometimes people or kids can provoke you? (laughs) They can really get on you and they provoke you, they're pushing you. So it's more of a stirring, it's actually a stronger term that God says that we are to provoke one another. That we're here to provoke one another. We're here to remind each other that we are to love each other. We're here to remind each other, provoke each other, that we need to do good works. Good works meaning be a part of God's great plan in his mission here, in his church, and not neglecting, okay? Neglecting means you leave something behind, and the Greek says, you leave it in some place, you forget about it, and you neglect it. God says you can't do that. You can't do that within a community. You can't neglect meeting together because this is God's gift to us. Coming together on a Sunday morning, going to a life group, going to Sunday school, getting together at a moose camp, not neglecting that opportunity to allow God's work and His Word to stir one another and to encourage one another. We know what it's like to be discouraged. We know when life gets hard, things don't go our way, when suddenly you find yourself suffering something that is happening in your life and courage is robbed from you and you're struggling. How many times in my life have I had people come alongside me and gave me courage because of their fellowship and their love? That is God's call to us. Do not neglect coming together. Provoke one another to love and good works. So this morning, it's just a simple little thing. Jesus' disciples live live in a loving community. The first and most important thing we need to know is that we are disciples. We can't get away from that. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have become disciples. You are in boot camp. You may not like it, But we're in boot camp. We have to understand the reality that we are in camp. We're in English class. I hated English class. But I'm there. I was placed there, and the key is that I can't do anything about it, but I have to be able to let English teach me English. But we're there. We are disciples. We cannot get away from that. And God will, in his loving way, continue to remind us that we are his disciples, and he will provide us ways to grow in our discipleship, in our ability to take on disciplines that help us grow. We live in a loving 
community, a loving community. Now, we know that there's times in the community there's conflict. God knows that. So many times in scriptures we see God's word reminding us that conflict left unattended brings division and discord. God says there's conflict. A mature person understands that. A mature person understands that we have to resolve that conflict. Because we want to redeem the relationship that is lost, that can be lost in that conflict. We want God's Spirit to allow for healing whatever hurt that happened in that relationship. So we know that in a loving community, there's going to be conflict. God will help us to do what? Resolve conflict, to love one another. But that's what a part of a healthy family is. A healthy marriage is a loving marriage is willing to take the step to resolve whatever is there. To pull the wedge out. Allow God to pull that wedge out. But we live in a loving community. I think some of you probably have heard this illustration before. Well, I'm going to share this again. There was a, um, a certain man who um, lost his wife. And he uh, was struggling with that loss. And him and his wife were going faithfully to a church for a long time. But through the grieving and through the hardness and through the suffering, this man decided to pull away from the church, from his brothers and sisters in Christ, to live sort of a solitude life, a life alone, to kind of, you know, wallow in that grief, whatever it is. And there was a certain pastor that knew that. And what the pastor did was he went ahead and visited this man. And the man brought him in his house, and they sat together, and they were looking at a fireplace with a couple burning logs. And and, and the pastor, in his wise thought, took a piece of the log and pulled it away from the log and let it sit there. And suddenly that glowing amber, amber, started to fade. And the man realized what's happening. Because of that, he realized the importance of coming back to the log. Because of God's Holy Spirit, we stir one another. We encourage one another. We allow for the loving community to grow and help us in those very hard, hard times. I want you to know the last night was a rough night for me. A rough night. For a week, I spent some glorious days in fellowship. I wasn't lonely. I was there cooking supper, playing cribbage, hunting moose with these guys, telling our stories, telling our faith. And I come back to church last night, and I was grieving. I was alone again. Missing that fellowship. It's rough. God never intended us to live aside from that community. Don't worry, I'm okay. <laughs> God's grace is good. You know, it's, it's always great to have a phone call and chat with Cynthia and we pray together. But there is a grief that happens when you're pulled away from a loving community. It's a good grief. Because it reminds us how important it is for us to be a part of a loving community. And God uses this loving community to grow us, to be stronger disciples. Amen? I think every one of us here can sit back and say that there's no way I can live life alone without my brothers and sisters in Christ. Do I hear an amen? Amen? They're the very ones that help encourage me. They stir me up. They challenge me. They remind me of God's love and goodness. Amen? The loving community is an act of grace, great grace from God. And it's a way that we grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you so much again for your word. It's your word, for your presence that reminds us 
that speaks to our heart, speaks to our souls, that you're good, you're loving, you're always with us, and you truly, truly want true worshipers, not just a Sunday morning, but every day, God, you call us in, you invite us into your presence, help us to respond, help us to receive that invitation, and we pray this in your son's name, amen. Please stand for our last song. want you to know, uh, I believe that God wants us this morning, I know this is, I'm challenging you, is that uh, there are some people here that you do not know. I want you to go to a person that you don't know well, ask for their name, and just connect with them. Allow for that shell of that peanut come off, and allow for Koinonia Fellowship to happen. So please, look for someone and go to that person. Do not leave the church. Do not go to church by the grace, mercy, and love of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, at home, at work, at church, school, or at play, there is the church of Jesus Christ. Go and be his church. Amen. Amen.